And Ruth Marcus, uh, you brought up one of the donors, Daniel Abraham. I interviewed him the other day. This is what he had to say about why he wanted that meeting uh, rather quickly with Secretary Clinton. I believe that people give to the foundation because they believe in the work that the foundation does. It does an enormous amount of good work around the globe. They have saved millions of lives. They have given drugs and, and medicines to people all around the world. I mean, you know, to claim anything but good to the Clinton Foundation is a crime against humanity. And what he was also saying is that his work uh, between Israelis and Palestinians is what brought him to the State Department. There's no way to tell. So um, I didn't quite hear the last thing that you said, but y the Abraham interview illustrates the sort of m mixed motives here, not the mixed motives necessarily on the part of donors. We can't read their minds. He's given millions of dollars to the Democratic Party, to Hillary Clinton, and to the foundation. But the mixed motive on the part of Secretary Clinton, why is she taking this meeting? Um, it all kind of rolls in together. That one, I don't think, probably had anything to do with his money to the Clinton Foundation. He just was an important person to her, um, both um, financially and substantively, um, with or without the money to the Clinton Foundation. But going back to something that Jonathan said, um, everything I agree with everything that he said, but uh, I think it leaves out one really important point, which is, yes, people give to the foundation for lots of different reasons and because it does good works. But then when you have folks like Doug Band who are associated with the foundation, who are writing to people at the State Department saying, this guy is important to us and this guy is a good friend, that leaves you open to the sort of situation that the Clintons are facing now. And it's not a question of wrapping it up now. It's a question of having thought this through adequately uh, several years ago. And in fact, just one of your points, Ruth, in your column is that this is a continuous problem. It has not just started with this foundation. Here is in a flashback Friday, Bill Clinton in 1997 at the White House being asked about whether or not they were selling the Lincoln bedroom to donors. I think it's a good thing when contributors care about uh, the, the, the country and have some particular area of expertise they want to contribute. But nobody buys a guaranteed result, and nor should they ever. They should get a respectful hearing, and the president should do what's right for the country. So it's, um, it's, it's not a legal issue. It's a question of ethics and of appearance. Right. They didn't buy a guaranteed result. They bought um, a night that in the most historic bedroom in the land, um, and they got it because they were giving money to the Clinton campaign. Now, the Clintons and their supporters say that they are held to a higher standard and things that they do are treated as, you know, high crimes uh, that would be laughed off and sort of treated as business as usual by anybody else. That is possible that they are held to a higher standard or scrutinized more greatly, but I would argue that the response to that, the Clinton response to that, should be um, making themselves, making sure that they don't put themselves in this situation, which we see time and time again. Ruth Marcus and Jonathan Capehart, thank you Thanks. both so much.